Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Tips to Perk Up Your Excel Workbook with Mr. Excel. The webinar is sponsored by More for Apps. My name is Stephanie DiPaolo, and I will be your moderator for this event. Now you've probably already seen our free Excel coffee mugs by now, but if you haven't requested yours, it's not too late. Bill has his if you want to look up at his screen. They're great. Please let us know in the chat panel if you're interested and we'll send one your way. At the end of the webinar, we also have a survey that will go out and you can request one that way as well. They are being sent out next week, so please keep a lookout in your mailbox over the next 10 to 14 business days for yours to show up. And everyone knows Bill, but Bill Jellin is the host of MrExcel.com and the author of 64 books about Microsoft Excel, including Excel Gurus Gone Wild, Pivot Table Data Crunching, and Excel Inside Out. He has made over 80 guest appearances on TV's Call for Help with Leo Laporte and was voted Guest of the Year on the Computer America radio show. He has produced over 2,400 episodes of his Excel video podcast, Learn Excel from Mr. Excel, and I'm sure those numbers have grown since I, I've last wrote this bio for you, Bill. And before founding MrExcel.com in 1998, Jelen spent 12 years in the trenches as a financial analyst for the accounting, finance, marketing, and operations departments of a publicly held company. And before we get started, I'd just like to review a few items with you. Make sure that you save the date for our last Mr. Excel webinar as part of this More for Academy series. This is just the last one for the calendar year. Um, more communications will be coming out as we work out the details. And Bill has promised that we will start to uh, schedule some more <laughs> next year. So save the date and more to come on that one. Now let's cover the housekeeping items. Audio is available by dialing the number provided. If you have any questions, we ask that you reserve them for the end using the Q&A panel or chat, and we'll respond at that time. At the conclusion of the webinar, there will be a few survey questions about your experience, and we'd appreciate your participation. Finally, we get this question a lot. You will receive the slides and the recording from today's webinar within the next 24 hours. So keep a lookout in your inbox for the slides and recording and related resources. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to marketing at moreforapps.com or your account manager. And as a reminder, you must complete three out of the four live poll questions during this webinar in order to receive your CPE credit. Bill will email those directly to you within one week. Now a little bit about MoreforApps. MoreforApps started in 2000 by a group of Oracle consultants in search of a better way to load and manage data from a spreadsheet directly connected to Oracle ERP. Now, 21 years later, we offer nearly 30 out-of-the-box wizards built specifically for Oracle e Business Suite and Cloud ERP with validated integration and tight security. And MoreforApps is a market leader offering 24-7 global support coverage for our 400 plus customers and 34,000 plus end users. We always aim to improve operational efficiencies, productivity, and accuracy of data entry. And without further ado, Bill, I will pass it on to you. All right, Stephanie, this is uh, great to be here uh, again, doing another seminar uh, for Excel for Apps. This is on uh, how to make your spreadsheets faster. Uh, some great uh, formula speed tips today that we're gonna go through. Um, I kind of have a plan here. We're gonna talk about uh, several different uh, situations where there's more than one way to do a formula and we'll uh, compare the times for those. Sometimes it's dramatically faster uh, to do a formula one way versus the other. So the examples there will be how to do a running total, uh, VLOOKUP, um, doing some ifs with helper cells or without. Uh, and then the last one will be VLOOKUP versus XLOOKUP. And then sprinkled in there, uh, just some fun things like a fast way to fill the numbers one to 100,000, uh, the fastest way to convert a column of text numbers to real numbers, and that just changed recently. Uh, I'll throw a double click the fill handle in there. Uh, fast worksheet copy, uh, fast way to break links uh, instead of paste values, uh, and some VBA tips along the way. All right, now look, I, I want to give a shout out here. Uh, to a friend of mine, a great guy named Charles Williams. I met Charles probably 20 years ago. He's an Excel MVP from England. Uh, and he is the guy, uh, we all call him Charles Fast Excel. He's, in my mind, the world's foremost expert on spreadsheet speed. 
And I started becoming aware of spreadsheet speed back in 2007 when Microsoft published the white paper that Charles wrote. And that uh, is still available online. It's Mr. X.CL slash XL speed. Great 60 page white paper that really will open your eyes to a, a lot of different things. He's uh, also has a blog at fastxlwordpress.com, and he's the author of this great add-in that we're not going to use today. But if you're serious about formula speed, you'll want to take a look at this thing called Fast Excel. Uh, and you can, yeah, I think he has a 30-day trial or something like that. There's tools here that let you calculate a specific range, that profile the workbook. If you have a workbook that is really, really running slow, uh, this these tools will help a lot. All right, so I have these installed, but we're not using these today. I'm just gonna use actually things that I got uh, from the white paper 15 years ago that I've been using ever since. I'm a little embarrassed, am I embarrassed? To admit that I'm one of these people who will sometimes geek out by measuring formula speed. So we'll come up with two different formulas. Uh, we'll set up 100,000 rows in Excel and then use this code that I'm gonna show you to measure the time for one and the time for the other. Um, Mike Gervin, who is my friend out on YouTube, will do this a lot more than I will. He has a protocol, like he runs each one three times. I'm just trying to, to get an idea. If it goes from 60 seconds to 10 seconds, that's enough to get my attention. If it goes from a half a second to four tenths of a second, then I just say, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use the formula that's easiest for me. All right, so let's dive in here. We're gonna to go to that running total example. Uh, which I should have open here. All right, so the methodology that we're gonna use for these four different uh, formulas examples is using some code from the Charles Williams white paper. Uh, just simple little code that I, I copied in to VBA. And what this is, this is a timer that's accurate down to like a thousandth of a second or something like that. Uh, and then generally I'm gonna press a button and that is going to get the timer it's going to enter the formula in a whole bunch of cells and then convert everything except for the first cell to values, right? So both of those are gonna happen and then um, measure the timer and it will tell us how long something took, right? So that way we can see if one is better than the other. And, and my first example here is how to create a running total, right? So we have a lot of rows here and we need to create a running total. And I, you know, there, there's two very popular ways to do this. And the first way to me is what I call, you know, just the, it's the kindergarten method. It's you just learned Excel and you need to do a running total. And I, I actually love to, you know, look down on the people that are using this method, which is going to be ironic, right? Just bear with me if you use this method, because it, it's the best, best method where you do equal F2 plus E3. So it's always a cell above us plus the cell to the left of us. And then you copy that formula down. Now, the reason I never liked this formula is that formula doesn't work in cell F2 because that would be 22810 from E2 plus the word year to date revenue. And that's gonna create an error. And I want every single formula in that column to have the exact same formula. I don't like F2 to just say equally to. That drives me nuts. Like I would have to enter the formula twice. I know that's not a big thing, but to me, that was a big thing. A shout out to another friend of mine named Zach Barizi, who gave me a great workaround for that. Instead of just simply equal E2 plus F1, the cell to the left of us plus the cell above us, Zach said, we'll put that in a sum function because the sum function is smart enough that if it encounters text, it throws it out, right? So that simple little sum function there, sum of E2 to F plus F, E2 comma F1 does the cell to the left of me plus the cell above me, and it continues to work for F2, right? So I don't need two different formulas. Hooray for that. All right. So here, we're going to run this uh, macro, and we're going to see how long it takes. How many rows do we have here? We have 95,000 rows, about 95,000 rows. So we're going to copy this formula down, the simple running formula, uh, right? And it did that in 0 0.27 seconds. So a quarter of a second to do 100,000 almost 100,000 rows, uh, which is really good. And you can see the formula here is the sum function. And then all of those other numbers are now just hard-coded as numbers. So put the formula in hard-coded as numbers. That way it's not going to slow down the next column, just so you don't think I'm cheating or anything like that. All right, now here is the formula that I think is the awesome formula. This is, the, when I learned this formula, I'm like, oh, like that was, that was a stepping stone to me becoming the Excel guru. 
in the office, right? And when you first look at this formula here, it's the sum of E dollar sign two colon E two, right? There's only a single dollar sign there. And this is called an expanding range, right? And the concept of the expanding range is an awesome thing. As you copy it down, the E dollar sign two stays locked at row two, but the other half, the relative half is allowed to move. Let's just, let's just copy this down 10 rows so you can see how it changes as I go down. You see down here, it's now taking the E2, still E2, but it's going to the current row each time, right? These expanding ranges, I think are amazingly cool. And to me, you know, it shows superior Excel skills that you know how to do that. And so I'm a big, big fan of those, right? Until I read that Charles Williams formula speed white paper back in 2007. And this is one of the examples that says the expanding range is horrible in this case. Now, just remember, we can put in the 95,000 cells over there in column F in 0.28 seconds. And I realize that changes by a hundredth of a second. That's why some people run it three times and take an average. Um, it's just, you know, factors on your computer that do that, but less than, less than a third of a second for sure. All right, now here, so that's the simple running total. Now we're gonna do the sophisticated running total with an expanding range. All right, so obviously it's longer than a quarter of a second. Uh, so far, and we're just going to let that little blue spinny uh, circle go there until we get the message that it's done. You see that they filled in the first few, right? At least the first screenful has been filled in, uh, but it's still running. It's still working on calculating those 95,000 rows of running total. Let's see. I did do a test this morning. Oh, all right. So I need a story to tell here. It's not going to be an hour or anything like that. That would be really, that would be really bad. Um, but it's going to be a minute uh, for us to fill in all of those. All right, so just doing some math here, column F was a third of a second. Column G, the sophisticated way, uh, is going to take more than 60 seconds, so almost 200 times longer, right? That gives a lot of, a lot of benefit to the simple method over there in column F of the cell to the left of me plus the cell above me, either in the sum function or just as this plus that. All right, we've got to be getting close. Hang on. Let me grab a sip of water from this great mug from more for apps. Relax, I've got a spreadsheet for that. This makes me think I should have put a progress bar in or something so I know that it's working. Oh, down here in the, in the lower right-hand corner, I can see that it's filling cells and it's like about 80% of the way done. So we're getting there. You're starting to get to the point where you think that Excel just hung and you wanna control delete out, aren't you? There. It just jumped up to about 90%. 95, almost there. All right, oh my gosh. Wow, that is insane. So we went from a quarter of a second, 0 0.28 seconds to 164 seconds, uh, just changing the method that we used for running totals. Now, how can that be? How can it take so much longer uh, for one method versus the other, right? So why is it faster? Method one, there's 94,000 rows uh, that has 90, so there's 94,000 formulas and each one references two cells, the cell to the left of me plus the cell above me. So that's 189,000. 170 cells that are referenced using column F. Uh, but think about this column G, right? The very first cell, it references one cell, that's the cell to the left of it. But then in cell two, it's referencing two cells. In you know, cell 10, it's referencing 10 cells. And in the very last formula, it's referencing 94,585 cells, 
right? When we add all of that up, so we're going from 189,000 cells that we're going to touch to million, billion, four trillion, trillion, four trillion cells, right? This is a shocking one to me because I would always build my running totals using the expanding range. And I guess if you only have 30 rows, it's not going to matter. But if it's several years, uh, it definitely, definitely is going to matter, right? So there's one where the, uh, uh, the, the year to date total or the running total is definitely faster if you choose just the two cells. Now, throughout the day here, we're going to have four polling questions and we've actually reached the first polling question. So let's see if we can put that one up. All right, polling question number one, uh, which is the faster way to calculate a year to date total? Is it sum of D dollar sign two colon D 100,000, the sum of the cell to the left of us plus the cell to the right of us, a sum ifs, wow, or a pivot table? All right, that's great, that's great. We're going to get, wait till we get up to about 80%. You know, some of you may not need CPE credits, so you uh, may not be answering these. All right, there we are. There's our answers. So uh, the correct answer is the second one. Sum of E1 to D2. Uh, and that was about 71% of the people. Uh, the Expanding range is definitely a, a, um, a popular way, but uh, potentially potentially slower. All right, good. Let's, uh, let's just go with something really simple here. Uh, I need to fill the numbers one to 100,000, just down a, a range, right? So uh, can we do that with a fill handle? Now, most people think that when you grab the fill handle and drag, that one changes to one, 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 one. But if you've been in one of my seminars before, I almost always sneak in uh, this great little trick where you hold down the control key and the one counts to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? But if I would try and do that method, even holding down the control key to get to 100,000, it's going to take an insanely long time. Like I would never have the patience to actually do that. So I'm just going to stop and abandon that method and say that there has to be uh, something, something faster, right? So here, here's a great, very geeky, long method that uses a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, right now I'm sitting in cell D5 and I wanna to go to D100,004. So I press the F5 key, which is go to, you can also use control G for that and say that I wanna to go to D100004. And I'm gonna hold on the shift key while I click okay. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna select everything from the selected cell, the active cell uh, down to the end. Oh, I actually went too far, hang on and count the zeros right. Control G, we're gonna go to D, 100,004, hold down the shift key, and then just a nice little formula there of equal one plus the cell above me, control enter, fill in the top one for one, and that gets us the numbers one to 100,000, uh, but it's complicated, right? So in my opinion, the fastest way to do this, and it's hidden out here, in a command that almost no one uses on the far right hand side of the home tab under home fill and then fill series fill series so you make sure to type in the one that's the important part select that one and go to fill series and change the column so we want to fill down the column instead of across the row the step value is one and we're going to stop at a hundred thousand click okay All right and very very quickly that fills in the numbers one to a hundred thousand that was always the fastest way to do this. Now today, if you have Microsoft 365 and you have those new dynamic arrays and the sequence function, you can just type in the sequence of 100,000. Press enter very quickly. It fills in the numbers one to 100,000. But then of course you need to convert those formulas to values using whatever method you might wanna use. I'm gonna use this great method using the mouse. I'm gonna right click, drag right, drag left, let go. I was right click on the right edge, drag right, drag left, let go, copy here as values only. Uh, it's probably just a dead heat, whether it's faster to do column L if you have 365 or column I using fill series, fill series. Very cool, uh, very cool bit of uh, 
functionality that no one realizes is out there. The other one I use on this all the time is fill justify. And that's if I have a whole bunch of long sentences that I need to fit into a section at the bottom. So these are really long sentences. I need to word wrap to fit in O through S, let's say. So I can select where I want it to go from O through S and then go to fill and justify and it will word wrap that. You know, I know this isn't word, I get that. But you know, sometimes we just need a little bit of paragraph of text down at the bottom of our report to explain things and fill justify is a very cool way to do that. All right, so there we go. We talked about running total and the fast way to fill 100,000 cells. Let's save that one. And come back to our folder and go to another formula speed example. All right, so here I have uh, data. We have region, product, date, customer, and then revenue, right? And out there in column F, my manager wants to know uh, that sale, what percentage of the total revenue for the region is it, All right? So that means that I need to calculate uh, how much the east region was right so it's a it's a it's a medium complex formula i'm going to take whatever's in e2 divided by the sum if look through everything in column a see if it's equal to east if it is out of the corresponding cell from column e um, i've probably built this formula you know thousands of times over the year over the years uh, let that calculate you see that we're doing 94,585 rows Minus the heading, so 94,000. We'll see how long this takes. Try to make sure that these all finished in under a minute. There we are. So 21.64 seconds. 21.64. Uh, that's not horrible. Uh, it's that formula there. So the E2 divided by the sum if. You know, I think it's fairly common. You probably have run into someone or you've done this formula before. Uh, but this is a great example where some helper cells uh, will make things a lot faster. What are helper cells? If you think about the formula that I was just using, I'm doing that sum if part, go see what the east total is over and over and over again. And I really only need to do that once for each region or each product, right? So here I'm measuring how much ABC, how much DEF, how much XYZ. Uh, so look at this, I switched, I switched horses midstream to do it as a percentage of the product, but there's three regions and three products that's going to be the same, same answer either way. And then the formula I'm using is E2, the revenue in this row, divided by the X lookup into this. X lookup or V lookup are going to be about the same. So we're at 22 seconds the old way by creating these little helper cells there. Wow, from 22 seconds down to 0.63 seconds. So almost 40 times faster uh, just by taking these little helper cells out here and um, you know, not having to do the sum if. You would think that XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP are slow and we're gonna talk about those, um, but it turns out that sum if and sum ifs are dramatically slower than, um, than XLOOKUP. So you know, we went from 15 to 20 seconds uh, using sum if, and then by putting the helper cells uh, down to you know, about half of a second. So much, much faster faster way to go. All right. We'll save these and we'll make these available in case you uh, want to go try any of these or, you know, the impression manager or show off your, your coworker who keeps doing things the wrong way or something like that. Here's a, here's a great one. And this is one, I have to give a shout out to the Excel team uh, in particular a guy named Prash Shikrilar. Prash is uh, really trying to make Excel faster. And for him, he sees a lot of people think that Excel 2003 was the fastest version of Excel ever. Excel 2010 was the gold standard after Excel 2003. And he's trying to make sure that Excel today is as fast as Excel 2010 is. And he really focuses on uh, these, these things that take insanely long that should never take too long. Um, so 
I have a situation here where over in column A, I have city, state, and zip, and I need a way to get just the zip code out. Uh, one very popular way to do that is with the write function. Um, soon, for those of you who have Microsoft 365, a beautiful new function that I'm a huge fan of, the text after function. We can get everything after that space, and it lets us say which space. So like here, if I ask for everything after the first space, it would give me New Hampshire 03103. If I ask for everything after the second space, I get 03103. But you see, sometimes there's extra spaces like Sioux Falls or Salt Lake City. And the person that built this did an amazing thing out here in the third argument where you get to say, which space do I want? If you put a negative number in, it counts from the end, right? So this is a great way to get the very last word in a cell. Uh, watch for that. It's in beta right now. It will be coming out. And by the way, who's the guy that invented the negative one? That's Charles Williams, right? So Charles is, uh, you know, kind of the Char Charles is the hero, uh, at least my hero of this. All right. So I end up with a whole column of text numbers, and now I need to convert those text numbers to real numbers. And I've always had four ways to do this. Not always. I always had one way. Uh, but then along the way, things things kind of Im improved, right? And my method, my method for this was just to go to a blank cell and put in the number one. And I understand this is super geeky and super nerdy, right? I'm going to copy that one and put that one on the clipboard and then select all of the text numbers and go to paste special, paste special. And when I do paste special, I'm going to choose to multiply. If I don't want to screw up any formatting here, let's say there had been dollar signs, I would choose values. So pay special values multiply. When Excel takes that one on the clipboard and multiplies it by these text numbers, it very quickly changes all of those to real numbers. All right. So that's my go to method. Um, I was at, out at Microsoft uh, 20 years ago, maybe, and uh, you know, talking about various Excel tips. And I showed this, and a friend of mine, Bob Umless, just shook his head and said, I can't believe that. You're wasting two keystrokes, he says. <laughs> and Bob says, don't put the one in. That's a waste. Just go to any empty cell. You have to have empty cells. Just copy the empty cell and then paste special. I'm like, hang on a second. What does copying the empty cell do? He says, that puts a zero on the clipboard. A zero. I said, well, if I multiply everything by zero, it's going to go away. He's like, you're not going to multiply. You're going to add. Take all those text numbers and add a zero. And that converts them all to numbers, all right? So, hey, check that out. Two very geeky ways to do that. Now, I have a YouTube channel, uh, maybe 1,600 videos ago, probably like my video number 400. I show these two methods. I love the YouTube channel. The people who watch my YouTube channel are smarter than me. They always come up with great comments. And someone in the comments said, oh, no, 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 you're both wrong. There is a really fast way to do this. All you have to do, it's an easy keyboard shortcut to remember, is Alt-D, D for data, E for edit, F for finish, uh, D, E, F, D, E, F, right? So just do Alt, D, E, F, and that converts the formulas, text numbers, converts the text numbers to real numbers. It didn't write justify them, which is kind of a little annoying, uh, but it's a fast way to do it. What are we doing there? That's the old keyboard shortcut for data, text to columns, finish, right? So, you know, a very fast way. So seven days later, there's another video where I say, oh, hang on, there's a faster way to do that. Right. And then I get a comment from someone who says, you're the biggest geek I've ever seen. There is a yellow sign that appears. Just open the sign. And the second choice is convert to number. Now, I have to admit, when I got that comment, I had never seen that. Like, I don't open those yellow signs. Why would I open the yellow sign? Convert to number. Right. But it turns out that convert to number historically was very, very slow, particularly if you had a VLOOKUP table that was looking into this, right? So off here to the right-hand side, I have put a VLOOKUP table that is doing thousands of lookups into this little table. And what would happen in the old days, you would use convert to number and it would do the first one and then calculate the table. Do the second one, calculate the table. Do the third one, calculate the table. And if you're back in 2016 or 2013 or 2010, you still have this problem and alt DEF D -E will be the fast way. But today, Prash changed this. They do the entire column and then one final calc at the end, which is beautiful, right? So the faster way today, provided you have Microsoft 365, is to use convert to number.
which brings us to polling question number two. All right, what's the fastest way to convert text numbers to numbers? And let's assume here that you're on Microsoft 365. So choice number one, open the exclamation icon and choose convert to number. Good. Choice number two, copy a one and paste special multiply. Choice number three, copy a blank cell and paste special add. Uh, choice number four, select all cells and alt D E F. Good, we're up to 80%. Uh, I like this. All right, so 69% uh, of us said choice number one, open the exclamation icon and convert to number. Uh, we're gonna accept select cells, alt and alt D E F, still a really, really fast way to go. Uh, so both of those are excellent. All right, very good. Next up, we're gonna go on to uh, B lookup, B lookup. And um, this is one, you know, long ago, for 17 years, I was constantly on the road uh, doing live seminars. I would travel around the, the country doing 35 days of uh, seminars a year. I almost always flew the same airline, so I had status with them, which meant that I got free Wi-Fi on the way home, right? And at some point, I would just get bored and take out the iPad and open Twitter. And this, I understand, is super geeky, but I don't go to Twitter to see what my friends have to say or the people I'm following. I always go to Twitter and I look for three things. I search for VLOOKUP, I search for pivot table, and I search for the word Excel, right? You just get great stuff. Either you get someone who's having trouble with VLOOKUP and I can help them, or someone who just did their first VLOOKUP. That's a beautiful thing. You know, just imagine the very first VLOOKUP you did, your life is gonna change from here on out. I always congratulate those people. Tell them there's a, you know, welcome to the club. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> you know, or just fun, people who are funny. Who needs V lookup? If you're the only one I look up to, <laughs> that's great. Um, uh, when I lied about being proficient in Excel and then he asked me to set up a pivot table. And I think there was a funny meme after that. A uh, friend of mine, Deborah, has a great blog post here. Never, under, and never underestimate a pivot table. This is a great one. Beginner learns V lookup. Intermediate learns the index match. Advanced assigns the work to the intern, <laughs> which that's kind of true, isn't it, right? Okay, so VLOOKUP and pivot table are great, but the word Excel frustrates me because there's, I mean, Excel is a word in the English language that has nothing to do with spreadsheets. Like, I always keep finding this one constantly retweeted by Willie Mays fans. In order to Excel, you must be completely dedicated. Uh, you know, this is not what I'm looking for when I search for Excel or this one. I just want to excel in my career, make money, travel, and be happy. But the most annoying one is this guy, Cocoon FX Media Limited, who keeps tweeting this stupid Excel tip. V lookup, make sure the first column is A to Z first, and you name the data you're analyzing. All right, now I can tell by the way they spelled analyzing that they might be in, in England, especially that limited there. So I actually tweeted back to this guy. I said, do you mean the comma true version of V lookup or the comma false? And he says, either one. Like, no, that's not, that's not right, right? So I went out to my own Twitter followers. I said, all right, what percentage of your VLOOKUP formulas end in false for an exact match? And right away, Chris Murphy uh, comes back with 100%. And in fact, everyone comes back with almost 100% or 99.99999, except for one guy, uh, Lewis, who says, oh, it's like 80%. I use the approximate to create reference tables instead of nested if statements. Which is true. That's the only time that I would ever use comma true at the end of my uh, VLOOKUP. So, you know, 99% of the time I'm using comma false at the end of my VLOOKUPs for an exact match. The only time that I really use true is in the seminar when someone says, well, what's the true version for anyway? All right. So I set up a test to check to see if it was better to sort the lookup table or not, right? So I have two versions here. Um, the first one has uh, 7,000 VLOOKUPs into a large table 
and that table is just sorted in random order. Okay, now I need to leave Microsoft 365 to do this. So we're gonna run this little video here. And I actually sped this up to 2x speed. So that way you wouldn't have to watch the whole thing. I knew that we were gonna be running short on time. All right, so right now it's up to 40%. Uh, it's doing these 7,000 lookups into a pretty large table. We're up to 60%, 65%. And this is just a straight VLOOKUP, unsorted data. Put a comma false at the end, of course, like you would always have to do. All right, we're at 85%, 90%. And remember that the time that comes out here is gonna be double the actual clock time. So 63.97 seconds um, is the test that um, I got first, all right? So that's, that's the way that I would do this. Um, that's my method, all right? But according to Cocoon FX Media Limited, uh, this will be faster if we sort the lookup table A to Z first, all right? So we were, what was it? It was, uh, you know, 60 some seconds unsorted. And now we're running this again with it sorted. And in my opinion, the whole myth that the lookup table has to be sorted is one of those things that I keep hearing and I just don't think it's true at all. The only time it needs to be true, sorted is if you're using the comma true version, the approximate match version of VLOOKUP. But if you're just doing the exact match, which is what most of us are doing, then it doesn't matter. Now, the very first time that I ran this, it was running for 14 minutes or something like that. I had an insanely large table. All right, so there we go. We get to 76 seconds, right? So from 65 to 76, take that, Cocoon FX Media Limited. It's actually slower, all right? But I do have a way to make this faster. And that's to sort the table by popularity. Put the most popular items, your best selling items at the top of the table. And then more often than not, you know, they say that what 20% of the products accounts for 80% of the sales. So that means in 20% of the time, it can get to the item that it's finding, that it's looking for faster, right? And as soon as VLOOKUP finds it, then it stops and it goes on, right? So we're at we're at 60 some seconds and 76 seconds. And now we're gonna try and sort by popularity. All right. So it's uh, calculating we're at 10, 15, 20%, 25, 30. We're up to 50% already. Up to 80%, 90. All right, look at that. So that's, twice as fast, it's calculating twice as fast. And I was super proud. I was super proud of this. Um, and I started to show it in my live seminar, um, except for <laughs> there was a day uh, where I was in Amsterdam and it was a weird conference where they had two tracks, right? So you're in room A and someone else is presenting in room B. And I had mentioned Charles Williams at the beginning of this and who's in the other room, but Charles Williams. So he comes over. And he watch, watches me take this from 65 seconds to 30 seconds. He comes up to me afterwards. He says, he says, I suppose you're proud of that. I said, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. That's twice as fast. You know, a lot of people use VLOOKUP all the time. He's like, yeah. He says that comma false version of VLOOKUP that you and your accounting friends are using is super slow. It's the slowest thing in Excel, he says. And you would be so much better if you would switch over to the comma true version. And then he says this half sentence almost as if it doesn't matter. He says, now, sometimes it'll be wrong. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Charles, let me tell you about me and my accounting friends, as you call us. Uh, sometimes it's going to be wrong is a non-starter. We will never accept sometimes it's going to be wrong, right? So Charles had this crazy, crazy idea. He said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a VLOOKUP, um, the comma true version to get the item number, which is amazingly stupid. Like we already have the item number. And we're gonna to check to see if the item number that we received in return is what we were looking up, right? And if it's not, then we know that that item is missing and we need to handle that and say the item was not found. In, in essence, doing our own version of the pound and A error, right? And I, I'm, I'm thinking about this as Charles is explaining it to me. I said, Charles, 
this is this is insane. You're talking about doing twice as many VLOOKUPs, um, plus an if and an equality test. You know, like you have four times as many formula segments as I have. There's no way. He says, well, you know, let's bet. Let's bet. So we bet a beer. Uh, and remember, I'm at 30 seconds, right? And here we'll come back to our last little video here. And calculate, ready, here we go. Press calculate and it's almost done. Six seconds, All right? So we take something that went from 65 seconds down to six seconds, which is 10 times faster. I, like, I made it twice as fast. Charles uh, made it 10 times as fast, right? So this whole concept of doing two V lookups is you know just just amazing the way that it 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 makes things faster now here's the great thing about charles is he's very happy to share he writes all this on his blog post he shares it with the excel team and the excel team were impressed by charles numbers and they said wouldn't it be nice if we could do what charles is doing but just do it in a regular v lookup right so today uh what we can do is if you have microsoft 365 you don't have to do any of this. You can just do the regular old VLOOKUP that you always did, the VLOOKUP that took me 65 seconds, uh, you know, a few examples ago. And when I press calculate here, um, it's now down to 0.82112 seconds, right? That's amazing. And that's just built into Excel. Uh, one of the things you got in Microsoft 365, you'll probably also have that if you go to Office 2021. Uh, so from 65 seconds down to 0.82 seconds. And I hear you out there, you the index and match folks. Um, index and match is identical. It's actually one 100th of a second slower than uh, the VLOOKUP. Uh, there is a great thing where you sort the original data and check to see if there's two in a row and don't do the VLOOKUP on the same on the second one. That's 0.83, right? Not a, not a huge improvement. And even let's just take a look at XLOOKUP uh, X lookup at 0.65. So it's a tiny bit, tiny bit faster in this particular case. If we would do the X lookup uh, binary, and this time it does have to be sorted data A to Z, all right, down to 0.04. So the binary X lookup is faster, but then you have to sort your data, right? So unless, unless you're doing that binary X lookup uh, today, it's no longer necessary to sort the data. It's not better. Uh, at all, right? So there's our there's our table. The V lookup that I've been doing, and frankly that I still do today, uh, at 65 seconds. Sort that; it gets worse. Sort by popularity. Half improvement. Do two V lookups, a 10 times improvement. Just switch to Microsoft 365, and it's almost 100 times faster. No matter whether you're doing V lookup or X lookup or the binary version, right? So all kinds of um, great tips there. For me, VLOOKUP was the thing that I was doing all the time. I was pulling data down from the mainframe and I didn't have the description or whatever. And so I was almost always uh, doing a lot of VLOOKUPs after I pulled the data down. All right, good. We're at 1244. Let's uh, take a quick look here at uh, something I call fast worksheet copy. This isn't, it has a little bit to do with formulas, but it's just an amazingly fast uh, way to do things in Excel. So what I have here is a January report, uh, five weeks going across, products going down the side, and I need to add totals here. This is an awesome trick. Uh, rather than add the total to B12 and copy across, select all of your numbers plus one extra row plus one extra column, and then hit the auto sum like that. Also up here, a beautiful formula to pull the sheet tab up into the, formula, into the report name uh, using the cell file name, and then again, text after to get everything after the final right square bracket. All right, so now I need to make a copy of this for February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. You get the idea, right? In the old days, I would insert a new worksheet, copy and paste. Then I learned this great trick, right click, move or copy and choose the box for create a copy. All right, so that's uh, you know the method that was so much better than copy and paste because your page setup comes along but there's a much faster way than that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the control key and click on January and drag to the right. 
And that creates a sheet called January parentheses two. I'll drag that to the right. That's gonna be March, April, May, June. Once I get six of them, I click on January, shift click on June, and I go back to January, control drag the whole thing. Now I still have to go through and rename them. That would be nice if they would rename them for me. And the custom list has these months. You would think they'd be able to figure it out. Uh, but a very fast way to make uh, a copy of worksheets is to hold down the control key and then drag to the right, right? So check that one out. Let's go to our poll question number three. All right, what is the fastest way to copy a worksheet? Is it insert a new sheet, copy and paste? Right click the sheet tab, move or copy, control drag the sheet tab to the right, or just drag the sheet to the right. All right. So the last two there is whether you hold down the control key or not, or yeah, yeah, whether you have to hold down the control key. Almost up to 80%. That's great. All right. Yeah, there we are. So answer C is the uh, is it the right answer. Control drag the sheet to the right. Very good. All right. Uh, this is this is a the next example is an interesting example to me, um, but I'm not sure that it's interesting to all of us. And so I'm going to talk through this example. And then if this sounds like something that you're running into, uh, let's talk via email afterwards uh, and, and I can get you the exact example. I had someone who, who wrote to me and they were frustrated uh, that every day they got a new source file from the mainframe or from whatever system. And they had to take that data, copy it and paste it into another worksheet that had a lot of formulas on the far right hand side. Uh, and those formulas were fairly complex formulas. So they were doing a copy, and paste special values. And he said, it, Excel has gotten so frustrating that what he would do is he would do paste special values and then basically go get coffee, you know, talk to everyone, do all of the morning little you know, circle of errands and then come back and paste values would have been, uh, would have been complete. And what he discovered was that instead of paste values, what he would do is go into the sheet, the report, the finished report, um, and create a relative cell reference pointing back to this, the source data. So equal sign, you go click on cell A2 of the other sheet. And of course, anytime you, you point to an external sheet, it adds the dollar signs in for you. So you remove the dollar signs and then he would copy that to his data, right? So now we've created up a live link, which is not what he would wanna do. But then he found that this old, old thing here, I'm gonna look for links up here in this little bar. And there's something called Maybe a link. Oh, that's great. Okay, we have to get to the, the links panel. Oh, I don't have links here. That's why it's not showing it to me. Um, and then there's an option to break links. And somehow breaking links was faster than doing a paste values, right? So if you find something that's just taking way too long, uh, it, there's possibly a, a faster way to do it. And in this case, break links was faster than paste values. I've also seen all kinds of problems if you have a filtered data set and you do things while the data is filtered, like copying or pasting, you run into all kinds of problems there. All right, let's, let's keep going here. We're gonna talk about uh, some VBA tips. Uh, and this next one I got from, from Prash, who is on the Excel team. All right, so. I'm going to switch over into VBA here, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on VBA, but just for those of you who do some VBA, uh, you know, you might like this, all right? And this is a great trick that we learned from uh, the Excel team, and they haven't fixed this yet. They're just aware of it, and they passed on the information. I have just a regular old macro here uh, that's going to do you know, 20 seconds worth of work, right? And it's really redundant work. It doesn't matter what this macro is doing. I really just want to point out the fact here, let's see if I can get my magnifier to work, that when I run this macro up here in the title bar, Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications, and it gives me the name of the, the workbook, I'm in module one, 
we're going to take a look at what happens when I run the macro. Uh, so I'm going to run the macro. And up here at the very top, yeah, it's too fast. All right, I'm not going to use the magnifier. When I run this macro, um, the word running appears up here in square brackets. And it appears as long as the macro is running, right? And, and for a macro like this macro, that's not a big thing. But if you had a user-defined function that your spreadsheet was going to call a hundred times or a thousand times, like this one just takes a number and squares it. So if I pass it seven, it'll do seven times seven. And I can do a little formula here of equal do something, right? Copy that formula down. What turns out that as it gets to each cell, what's happening in the background is VBA is putting the word running up there and then removing it. So as it enters the cell, the word running appears. As it finishes the cell, the word running disappears. And no one is looking at this because it's behind the Excel grid. And they discovered that if you would close VBA and then run this, it'll be like three times as fast, right? I always leave my VBA modules open, right? I'm not careful about closing them. It's really important to close them if you have user-defined functions. Uh, so there is a really good tip. Uh, this next one, uh, this is a video that Charles Williams has out there when he appeared at the Bulgaria Excel days back in 2017. Great 40 minute um, item where he took an Excel macro and made it thousands of times faster. Um, I'm just gonna show you the top three uh, so he had a macro that was taking 2,940 seconds to run. And he said, if we could do these things, if we could turn off screen updating, application.screen updating equals false, turn the calculation to manual, turn it, enable events to false. And then he actually looped through each sheet and turned off the display of page breaks. So that that 2,940 second macro went down to 105 seconds, which is 28 times faster. The other thing he did, and you might consider this, is if you record the macro, the macro recorder loves to select a cell and then do something to it. You don't have to select the cell. So he was able to take that 105 second down to 4.4 seconds and then went on to some other things. For me, the macro running in four seconds, I'm great, right? That, 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 that's so much faster than 2940, right? So just these things right here are the things that I recommend uh, you do to every macro. Make sure that you turn off screen updating change calculation to manual. And then like at the end of the macro, you turn all of that back on. All right, good, let's do our, um, let's do our next polling question. Polling question number four. How can you make your VBA run faster? All right, A, turn off display page breaks, B, turn off screen updating, C, change to manual calculation, or D, all of the above, do all of those. Good. All right. Answer D was the right one. All of those. All right. Um, other things that uh, Microsoft has done for us recently, and this is from 2000 or 2020, 2021, 2022. Um, they've made some ifs faster. Uh, also, anything that ends in if, some if, count if, average if, uh, max ifs, and min ifs. If you are hitting the same range each time, uh, they actually build an index in memory, and those should now be faster. They may convert to number be faster. I showed you that. Uh, this macro speed tip just showed you that one. Another one is if you had borders in your data and filtered that data and then tried to insert a column, it was doing the borders on the hidden rows as well. And they've stopped doing that. Uh, it stopped taking so much time. If you have merge cells, I hate merge cells, and you delete a range, that used to take forever. It's now faster. And then check for errors. Um, that's something I hardly ever do the check errors. If it was more than 10,000 rows, it would never finish. You would be assumed that Excel had hung, uh, but in fact, it was actually just working there in the background. Um, but it now will actually work. So if you've shied away from these in the past because they, they never used to work, um, give those a try again if you have one of the later versions of Excel. All right, let's do our last uh, speed test here. 
and this is one near and dear to my heart uh, because you know it's it's the whole question of VLOOKUP versus index and match. Um, and the place where index and match definitely run circles around the VLOOKUP situation is when we have to do 12 columns of VLOOKUP. So I have to go look up A308 to get January, February, March, April, May. It is such a hassle to change that third argument from a two to a three, then a three to a four, four to a five, and so on. So let's just see how long this takes. Um, all right, so 12 different VLOOKUPs at 0.15 seconds, 0.15 seconds. So 0.16 uh, will be our, our baseline. All right, now, look, I don't do this with the two and the three and the four. I have workarounds, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen these workarounds where the third argument is the column function, right? The hassle with the column function is that it has to calculate that two, and then again, the two, the two, the two, the two. And that actually slows things down. So we went from 0.16 to 0 0.27. Um, the method that I use is to hide the numbers two through 13 somewhere and then refer to that. And that one is crazy. That one's actually just as fast as the original VLOOKUP. Let me go test, test that again. The original VLOOKUP at 0.12 and the reference at 0.11. I can't explain why that's actually faster. All right, but I, I completely respect the index and match people. They were like, your VLOOKUP is massively slow. We're gonna do one match. That match is gonna figure out where the answer is. And then these indexes are incredibly fast. Now, always traditionally up till about the year 2017, uh, this, this calculation would be 12 times faster than the VLOOKUP. But thanks to speed improvements from Crash and the Excel team, um, VLOOKUP is actually now beating index and match, even in this case, that's designed to be awesome for index and match. It's now twice as long to do the index and match, right? And I'm not trying to convince the index and match people to switch back. I know you never will. But for those of you who are VLOOKUP people and you hear from the index and match people that it's faster, not anymore, right? If you're using Microsoft 365, they are um, essentially almost equivalent. However, the one thing that really is faster is the new XLOOKUP function because one single XLOOKUP formula can now return all 12 numbers at once, right? So that means it finds it once and then returns all 12 and we'll run this. Oh, look at that, 0.14. There we go, 0.07. That's the number that I got this morning and the number that I kind of expect, right? So the XLOOKUP coming in you know, more than 40% faster than either the VLOOKUP or the index and match. So when uh, Joe McDade on the Excel team said that he made XLOOKUP in an effort to try and make both camps happy, the VLOOKUP camp and the index and match camp. Now I heard a few of my index and match friends like, oh, XLOOKUP is fine for those VLOOKUP people, but I'm never going to start to do that. Well, no, you really should start to do that because XLOOKUP is an amazing Amazing way to go. All right, there we go. Let's, uh, oh geez, we're down, down to the very end. Sorry about that. Um, if you had a question and I did not get to you, um, let's just, why don't you send me a, an email? If you're here today, you have tech support in Excel from me. Uh, so the email address pub, like the first three letters of the word publisher and just uh, put the subject line, hey, hey, I was in your seminar happy to uh, help you out. Uh, I'll put all these workbooks up there so Stephanie can send the link out uh, tomorrow with those. Uh, thanks to uh, More for Apps. These are great mugs. I love any Excel swag. Uh, relax, I've got a spreadsheet for that. This is, uh, this is great. So for those of you who chose the mug, watch for those to ship next week. And uh, thanks for spending your time with me today.